Our kidneys play essential roles in order to maintain our survival. Without our kidneys, our body won't be able to filter waste and excess substances from the blood. The accumulation of these substances can lead to tremendous damage to various organs in our body which can be fatal. Thankfully, healthy kidneys prevent this from happening. Not only do our kidneys clean our blood, but they also help regulate our blood pressure through the renin-angiotensin system and maintain the balance of vital electrolytes including sodium, potassium, and calcium. This helps your muscles and heart to function properly. However, despite its essential functions, your kidneys are also sensitive organs that can be affected by almost anything we put inside our bodies. When it comes to our bodies and our health, we all have pure intentions. We want to be the healthiest version we can possibly be. We try to address any issues or conditions our body is facing as quickly as we can, usually with the use of medications. But did you know that sometimes these medications can do you more harm than good? Your kidney requires specific conditions in your body to function efficiently, but most drugs work by doing changes to your body. This is why in this video, we will reveal to you seven common medications that can significantly damage your kidneys. Stay tuned until the end cause you may not expect number six. Now, without any further ado, let's get to it. Number one, nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are known as NSAIDs for short. These drugs, such as ibuprofen, are prescribed for those suffering from inflammatory conditions and associated pain. To decrease inflammation, NSAIDs work by inhibiting the enzyme cyclooxygenase to reduce the production of prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are vital active compounds that lead to the inflammatory response. However, that's not the only function of prostaglandins inside our bodies. Prostaglandins also help maintain blood flow to the kidneys. If prostaglandin levels decrease in the body due to NSAIDs, then the blood reaching the kidneys will also decrease. This is called kidney ischemia where not enough oxygen and nutrients are reaching your kidney cells causing acute kidney injury. Some of your kidney cells will die and your kidney function will deteriorate. Particularly, Elderly patients with pre-existing kidney disease must be aware if they're using nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. This is because the use of such drugs has been associated with a 66% higher risk of kidney damage. Number two, angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors. Angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors are a popular class of drugs used to treat and manage high blood pressure. The most prescribed are lisinopril, enalapril, and ramipril. They work by preventing the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is a powerful vasoconstrictor, meaning it makes your blood vessels narrower and increases your blood pressure. When you take angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, they decrease angiotensin 2 levels in your body, which widens all your blood vessels, including those supplying your kidneys. It's crucial that blood reaches your kidneys at a relatively high pressure to help in the blood filtration process. This is why using angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors could impair your kidney function, especially if you had a kidney condition to begin with. In fact, a study was done to investigate the effects of taking angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors medications on the kidneys of patients with hypertension or heart failure. The researchers measured changes in serum creatinine levels as an indicator for kidney functions. An increase in serum creatinine levels simply means a deteriorating kidney functions, which is what they actually found in 1 to 2% of participants. Number 3. Angiotensin II Receptor Blockers Angiotensin II Receptor Blockers like Lozartan, Thalsartan, and Herbisartan are also drugs used to treat high blood pressure like angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors. However, instead of preventing the formation of angiotensin II, angiotensin II receptor blockers medications block the receptor to axon instead. This leads to a similar effect on blood pressure and blood vessels in the body exactly like angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors drugs and unfortunately, also leads to a similar effect on the kidneys. Usage of angiotensin II receptor blockers among patients with hypertension 
diabetic nephropathy, or heart failure have been associated with a 1-3% to incidence of acute kidney injury. Before we continue, if you have been enjoying the video so far, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. Number 4. Diuretics The main goal of diuretic medications is to lower the amount of salts and fluids in your body. This can help decrease the severity of life-threatening conditions such as high blood pressure and heart failure. Diuretics can also be prescribed for milder conditions such as edema, where your body or parts of it are swollen due to water accumulation in the tissue. Popular diuretics include thyrosamide, hydrochlorothiazide, and spironolactone. They work by acting on cells in your kidney to increase the formation of urine. However, Excessive use of such medications can lead to dehydration and salt imbalances. Dehydration means that your blood volume decreases. This negatively affects your kidney because less blood will reach it. So, your kidney won't be able to perform its function properly. Diuretics can lead to acute kidney injury in 2-7% to of patients, with a higher incidence in those on high doses or multiple diuretics. Number 5. Proton Pump Inhibitors Proton pump inhibitors are commonly used to relieve symptoms of acid reflux or among patients of gastroesophageal reflux disease. Chances are you're taking either omeprazole, isomprazole, or lensoprazole. These drugs relieve the symptoms and associated pain by decreasing acid produced in the stomach. Your stomach acid is hydrochloric acid, made up of hydrogen and chloride ions. Proton pump inhibitors accomplish their function by inhibiting the hydrogen potassium ATKs enzyme in the stomach lining. This is what's responsible for pumping hydrogen ions into the stomach. Without it, less hydrochloric acid will be formed. Unfortunately, the usage of such drugs has been associated with an increased risk of acute interstitial nephritis. This is an inflammatory condition of the kidneys potentially leading to chronic kidney disease if not addressed immediately. Data analysis studies reveal that around 0.4 to 1% of long-term proton pump inhibitors users develop acute interstitial nephritis, which can progress to chronic kidney disease if not identified and managed early. Number 6. Antibiotics. By now, everyone must have heard that the excessive and unnecessary usage of antibiotics is bad for us. Popular antibiotics such as aminoglycosides like gentamicin, amikacin, and vancomycin have been found to be nephrotoxic, meaning they can cause damage to your kidney cells. This is why it's important to stick to the dose and the period of time your doctor indicates for taking the antibiotic. Moreover, it's unadvisable to self-prescribe antibiotics. Aminoglycosides are associated with a 10 to 20% risk of nephrotoxicity, while vancomycin carries a risk of 5 to 15%, especially with high levels or prolonged use. Number 7. Lithium. Lithium is used to treat psychological disorders, for instance, bipolar disorder. The issue with lithium is that it can accumulate in the kidneys, leading to nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. This is when your kidneys can't concentrate urine. The result is the production of large amounts of diluted urine and a constant feeling of thirst due to excessive water loss. This not only puts your kidneys at risk, but also puts your other organs that require salt water balance in your blood to function well, the most important of which is your heart. Lithium therapy is associated with nephrogenic diabetes insipidus in 10 to 40% of long-term users according to studies on patients with bipolar disorders. So, these were the worst seven common medications that can damage your kidneys. If you happen to be taking any of these medications, it's vital that you constantly monitor your kidney functions. Always inform your healthcare providers about any pre-existing kidney conditions you have. If you experience any kidney-related side effects while taking any of these drugs, speak with your doctor as soon as possible. Some of these symptoms include persistent fatigue, changes in urine or swellings in your body. It's likely that your doctor will adjust the dosage or change the drug. Now, we want to hear from you. Have you or anyone you know ever took any of these medications? How did it affect your kidney health? 
Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.